Columbia Planning Commission next session. Welcome Planning Commission member staff and guests. Multiple staff members are here today to ensure that the meeting runs smoothly and all applicants and members of the public are able to participate in the meeting and have the appropriate time. If you are here to speak about a case, please provide your name clearly into the microphone and please be sure to sign in either at the back of the room or at the podium for documentation purposes. If you are here today to speak about a case, you must speak up when the chairperson calls for public comment. <clears throat> I'll go ahead and call the roll. Mr. Causey? Here. Ms. Davis? Here. Mr. Dinkins? Ms. Thomas? Here. And Mr. Frost? Here. We have quorum. Brief review of the meeting format. Applicants request a four planning commission or allotted a presentation time of 10 minutes. This time should include, but is not limited to, an overview of the project, case history, and any permanent meetings held regarding the request. This time also includes all persons presenting information on behalf of the applicant, such as attorneys, engineers, and architects. This time limit does not include any questions asked by the planning commission or staff regarding the request. During the public comment period, members of the general public are given the opportunity to address their concerns in intervals of two minutes. After the public comment period, the applicants have five minutes to respond. Once the planning commission begins deliberation, no additional comments will be permitted by the applicant. The administrator does have a time frame one way presented to where when their time has expired. The planning commission reserves the right to amend these proceedings on a case-by-case -case basis. Are there any changes to the agenda? There is one change. Um, case number nine, which was on the regular agenda, Annex-2023-0014, 5706 and 5710 Fairfield Road, and 602 Oakland Avenue, and 721 and 731 Prescott Road has been deferred. The first item on the consent agenda is to approve the June 8, 2023 minutes. The next case is a future land use map amendment and zoning map amendment for a pending annexation by Richland County. Case 3, Annex-2023-0013, 408 Piney Woods Road and 418 Piney Woods Road request recommendation on the assignment of the land use classification of transportation and utilities and the assignment of zoning of light industrial district for a pending annexation. The property is currently classified as mixed residential high density and zoned light industrial by Richland County. Case number four under major subdivision preliminary plat review, S plat 2022 0070, 37.52 acres at the 4500 block of Percival Road request preliminary plat approval for the construction of a 93 lot single family residential subdivision, Victory Woods Village Phase 3. The property is currently zoned RM1 residential mixed district. Case five, under future land use map confirmation, land use or LUMA-2023-0001, 800 Dutch Square Boulevard, Request recommendation on the confirmation of the future land use classification of Urban Core Community Activity Center. The property is currently assigned an interim future land use classification of Urban Core Community Center, Community Activity Center. Mm -hmm. Case six, under the zoning map confirmation, 
is ZMA-2023-0011, 800 Dutch Square Boulevard, request to confirm the zoning of Community Activity Center Corridor. The property currently has an interim zoning of Community Activity Center Corridor. And finally, case number seven, under zoning map amendment, ZMA-2023-0012, on the south side of I-20 at Spears Creek Church Road, a portion thereof, request recommendation to rezone 34.4 acres from general commercial district to residential mixed district. And that concludes the consent agenda. Thank you. you haven't heard the consent agenda. Is there Hearing none, is there anybody from the public that would like to see an item on the consent agenda removed and put on to the regular meeting agenda? Hearing and seeing none, um, with none, I will entertain a motion. I, I'll, I'll move to uh, approve the June 8, 2023 minutes along with the consent agenda items and any staff recommendations. Got a motion to approve the consent agenda. Can I get a second? Second. Got a motion and a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, no? The ayes have it. Motion to approve. We will now move to the regular agenda. Okay, the first item on the regular agenda is item number eight. Um, it is Annex 2023-0010. It is a group of properties at 300 Clemson Road and 200 Clemson Road, including a one acre portion that actually fronts on Spears Creek Church Road. Uh, tax bet numbers uh, 25700-02-03, um, a portion thereof and 25700-0205, also a portion. And the request is a recommendation on the assignment of a land use classification of Community Activity Center Corridor, which is AC2, and Neighborhood Activity Corridor, AC1, and the assignment of a zoning of General Commercial District, GC, uh, concurrent with a pending annexation. The property is currently classified as mixed use corridor and zoned rural and residential single family low density by Richland County. Um, the applicant is the property owner, um, but the um, representatives for the property owner are actually present. Um, briefly, I'd like to get into the staff recommendation on, on the request. Uh, staff is actually recommending denial of the request. Um, and, and actually, I, I should note, a a brief correction in the recommendation as printed. Um, there it says that we recommend denial of the annexation and the um, assignment of, of the land use and zoning. And honestly, we're just making a recommendation on the land use and zoning district. The annexation is um, a different matter. But um, regardless, staff is recommending denial of the assignment of future land use classification of AC2 and AC1 and the zoning of GC as a requested zoning would not result in a development pattern that aligns with the recommendations of the county's comprehensive plan for that area. Uh, the Richmond County Comprehensive Plan states that the area is designated with a mixed use corridor uh, future land use classification should be quote transformed over time from traditional strip commercial development to mixed use corridors connecting activity centers. And between activity centers, corridors should be redeveloped to convert single story, single use developments on individual lots to multi-story mixed use formats that organize uses in a pedestrian friendly format. And um, I, I will note that even though it is the county's um, land use plan, uh, the county and the city did jointly enter into that um, land use project, although we adopted our own separate uh, portions thereof. 
um, be glad to answer any questions. And, and like I said, I, I know the um, owner's representative is here and present. It, is the property contiguous to the city? Yes, yeah, and it um, is is right in front of the, I believe it's called the Ashcroft subdivision, which is in the city. Does the city serve water? Yes. In the area, okay. I guess Palmetto Utilities would be sewer. That's correct. Would this be enlisted as an annex? Are we not taking up the annexation component of it? Well, uh, technically when the Planning Commission reviews annexations, um, you're making recommendations on the zoning and land use. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Any other questions before we have the applicant come up? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is Bob Fuller. I'm an attorney here in Columbia, and I have, I'm here this afternoon with Craig Waits, who is a real estate consultant for the property owner. I've been associated with this property for over 40 years by virtue of representation of Ms. Lee Lark Prina, who has owned the property for almost 60 years. Uh, it was a tract of over 200 and some odd acres and it has now been sold after many years of being off the market for any purpose. And this remainder piece of some 15 acres is being presented to you as a proposal for general commercial property, which is consistent with what has been its anticipated use since the decision was made to sell any of it for any purpose. Uh, the discussion has been ongoing for many years, is consistent with what's happening in the area. We believe it to be an appropriate zoning for annexation and uh, zoning within the city as well as within the county. Craig Waits can address the nuances of difference between general commercial and the CAC differentiations that we deem important, and I'm going to uh, give him the opportunity to make that presentation and respond to those matters that, that, that may concern you. Uh, Ms. Prino initially took the position that this property was simply to hold the earth together. Realities do change. She's still alive at over 100 years old, but in a nursing facility in Washington, D.C. She is alert and cognizant, though she has deferred most of her decision-making to others. But it was always her intention to uh, have this property maintained in a manner that was consistent with the inference of Columbia and Richland County as it developed, uh, although she would have preferred that nothing happened with it. So I will give any time that I have to Craig to present and to uh, deal with it. And if you have questions, I can address it starkly. I'll be glad to. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, my name is Craig Waits. I'm with uh, Carriers Real Estate Company here in Columbia. And as uh, Mr. Fuller said, I am the, the real estate consultant for the property. Um, just to add to a little bit of the history, um, you know, we, we've actually, we've been working on the property uh, for, I don't know, five or six years um, with, with staff. Um, we, it was originally 227 acres, and we came up with a, a plan uh, that would have... Um, Craig, can you speak a little bit more uh, the microphone? Yeah, I'm sorry. Can you hear me now? Sanford. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll lean down a little bit. Is that better? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay, um, so we um, we ha we've had a plan in place for about five years, um, and it it's always involved a uh, a single family, a multifamily, and a commercial component. Um, as 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 y'all are aware, we have uh, developed the single family is under um, development with the Mungo Company now. Um, there's also a, a multifamily project that is uh, under construction right now. Uh, both of those particular parcels and those projects were annexed separately, um, and they were annexed uh, and zoned based off of the, the uses. So we come now to the, the commercial sector and the commercial portion of this property, and um, I think we all agree um, that in, in working with staff that it's, it's, there's, there's obviously a level of commercial uh, application to it. Um, the um, the, the um, 
staff has recommended a CAC uh, zoning, and um, more or less we would contend that it is a GC is a, is more appropriate for this area. Um, I hope you you were able. I hope you didn't mind me sending you the email just simply because I tried to outline uh, a, a little bit of what my thoughts were with regards to the differences between GC and and uh, CAC. But in short, uh, the the we the, there's. 60 acres of, of GC zoning just to the north. Um, in fact, that was actually rezoned from MU1 or MU2, one of the two. I can't remember what the guy, Mr. Gottlieb's property. We rezoned it from, it was rezoned from MU1, MU2. MU2. It was in the MU actual zoning in the city, and that was rezoned to GC uh, last year to accommodate uh, a Publix development as well as a convenience store that's planned for the corner of Earth and and um, Clemson Road. So the you know the GC district is established in the area, and in fact, it's established to the northern portion of the of the area away from I twenty. So you would you would tend to think that the GC would be an applicable zoning on the southern side of that particular uh, property, closer to the to the interstate. Um, you know, also when you're looking at the um, the the CAC versus the GC zoning. Um, I was uh, I was I was actually part part of the the, the uh, planning process, and uh, when we when we in, in, uh, started the the, uh, the new zoning ordinance, and you know, I just I personally believe that the CAC is a little bit more urban, urban oriented, um, and if you look at it, it does discuss pedestrian friendly and walkability, which I I, I I get, and we and we and we want that, but you know, this is a uh, a five-lane road, with cars going 50 miles an hour. Um, it's not. It's not walkable, um, and it's you know a quarter of a mile from the interstate. So I, you know, I feel like GC is more of a more appropriate zoning uh, if you just look at the general character of the area. Um, thirdly, um, as far as uses, um, the, the one of the the I guess the two things that the two uses specifically that. Um, or uh, problematic in the GC would be uh, drive-through restaurants as well as um, as well as uh, convenience stores. The convenience store use is not, if, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, but the convenience store use is actually still allowed, but it requires that the, the canopy be placed in the back as opposed to the front. And um, for, for those of you that uh, are in the real estate business and know that 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 business um, itself, that it's just it's not practical um, the way that the, uh, the the site would be set up. So it's really it's really a deterrent for uh, convenience store type use. So the GC does allow that, and I do feel like that the, this area and this particular property portions of this property are tailored to uh, drive-through restaurants and and, and convenience stores. Um, and so that would be important for the for the GC zoning as well. And then I guess lastly the um, the the, the the, the, I guess my last um, point is that the, the mixed use from the county, um, it's really not a one-to-one. -one. Um, I mean, it, it's defined by mixed use, but if you look at what, what the definitions are and what they include and what they don't include, it's a, it's a blend. I mean, it's the CAC and the GC, and in fact, the, 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 the um, the description itself even says that GC is an applicable zoning in the mix in a mixed use corridor. So, and then if you look at the county's map, land use map, I mean, it includes all of Two Notch Road, which is you know dotted with convenience stores and, and drive-through restaurants. And so, for for all for all those reasons, I would you know uh, ask that the um, that the planning commission consider the GC zoning as opposed to the CAC as a part of the annexation. Um, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Any questions from planning commission for the applicant? Was this part of the original Ashcroft? No, um, it, no, it was a, we, it was all part of the original 20, 227 acres um, that the Prina property owned, and we ultimately subdivided the property. Uh, we subdivided it twice thus far. We sold off 180 acres to the Mungo, which became Ashcroft, and then we sold off another 20 acres to um, a Charlotte developer for the multifamily, and then we have th this left. So we've actually only done two transactions, but on both of those, we brought individually we brought those in through annexation and zoned them for those particular uses at that time. So it wasn't part of or was part of the initial 
larger parcel. It, yeah, it, well, it was, I, I, would, I would reframe it to say that Ashcroft was actually part of our parcel as opposed to us being part of Ashcroft, if that makes, makes sense. Okay. Semantics, but yeah. Any additional questions for the applicant? Thank you, Greg. Thank you. Is there anybody else here um, from the general public that would like to speak for or against the project? Nobody else. Is there any questions from the commission to staff regarding GC versus any other zoning? I, mean, I would say that I did read Craig's email. There's a lot of valid points in here. There's GC just to the north of it. Um, in my mind, it makes a lot of sense to be GC. Um, so hey. it feels right for this area. To me, it might not be the plan, but if I'm a resident in these neighborhoods, I think GC feels right for what, personally, I would like to see more, but it could you know, give more of a mix of can potential developments in the area. Lucinda, can you can staff elaborate a little bit more on the removal of the annexation portion and and how that ties into how we're classifying well, the zoning without yeah, that? Yeah, thanks for the question. It's not, well, it's not really the removal of, it's just that whenever the Planning Commission makes recommendations to City Council about pro properties that are going to be annexed, the Planning Commission recommendation pertains only to the recommended land use and the recommended zoning, and then city council looks at the other things that are considered with an annexation. So this is standard for the procedural part. It was just that there was a miss, I mean, we just accidentally put that into the recommendation that it included a recommendation on the annexation. Right. That was just a typo, but it's not really changed the recommendation. So for the <clears throat> public and everybody else, we are to go under the assumption that it is going to be annexed and our recommendation is. Yeah, the recommendation the will go to council either way. Correct, and they'll make that decision. Any other questions for staff or for the applicant? Hearing none, I'll accept the motion. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion that we approve uh, Annex 2023-0010, uh, 9.1 acre portion, 15.4 acre portion and one acre portion of 300 Clemson Road uh, for the assignment of zoning of general commercial for pending annexation. Second. Got a motion to approve, got a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Any opposed, no? The ayes have it, the motion is approved. And the final case on the agenda is a text amendment. This is TA 2023-0003, request to amend the Unified Development Ordinance, Chapter 17, Article 4, use regulations to remove the Fort Jackson spacing requirement for body piercing and tattoo establishments. And a copy of that change to the, the text is included in your packet. And if you have any specific questions about it, um, Ms. Hasty is here. Um, to get into details. There was a thousand foot setback requirement off of the Fort Jackson area, and now they're just removing that. Correct. Is there anybody here? Or does the Planning Commission have any questions for staff? Any concerns? Mm -hmm. well, is there anybody here in the general public? that would like to speak for or against this request. Hearing none, I will accept a motion. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to approve TA 2023-0003. Got a motion to approve. Can I get a second? Second. Got a motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, no? The ayes have it. Do we have any other business? I don't think we do. All right, so I'll accept the motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. 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 All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. We are adjourned.